This one is it's a little bit different, but again, this is where we're going with the enterprise. This is how the, the technology is changing. It's how it's forcing us out of our offices, out of our comfort zones, into something a little bit different. And in this case, it's medical devices and drones. Now, rural areas are often underserved when it comes to medical care, but that may change thanks to the work of Zipline. It's a California-based company that recently developed a drone delivery system that provides critical medical products to areas that lack roads and other infrastructures that you would normally need to get medical care to people. One delivery, one life saved. That's the logo. It's that simple. The company proclaims on its website. Uh, the drone delivery system is centered on something that they call a zip. It's a small robotic airplane designed to carry vaccines, medicines, and blood to rural areas. Now, to handle such precious cargo, the drone is equipped with safety features that they borrowed from the commercial airliner industry that will make a remote control airplane nearly crash free. Individual drones can carry supplies for small areas, while a fleet of zips can provide much-needed medicines and more for millions of people. Now, Chiebert, you found this story. What was it that, that sort of attracted you to this? Because there are a lot of drone stories out there, be it Amazon or Microsoft or Facebook working on their fleets. What was it about Zip that you thought uh, we needed to talk about? I've actually been in some areas where we had an accident and we needed some penicillin or uh, broad spectrum antibiotic in a really really big hurry and in the past this just wasn't possible you know a lot of broad spectrum antibiotics need refrigeration and a lot of remote places just don't have it so what something like zip does is a lot it can need the difference between life and death in a lot of cases and in our case this would have been great uh, because we actually ended up having to have someone parachute in with the broad spectrum antibiotics um something like zip would have been a lot faster a lot easier um and safer for a lot of people and what zipline has done is absolutely spectacular and i i really applaud the fact that they're doing such an underserved community in rural rwanda you know what i like about this story is uh it it's reminiscent of the whole mobile revolution that you have in places like Africa, like countries like Rwanda, where they've bypassed a whole stage of development that what we would call the first world countries have done. You know, they never went through the landline stage. They never went through slow internet connectivity over a modem stage. They kind of just stepped up straight to mobile. It's easier to deploy. And this is sort of the same thing. They understand that it would take billions upon billions of dollars to build up sufficient infrastructure to get quality medical care out into those areas. But with this, uh, in, the, in the story, you, you could actually have someone on their, their mobile phone that does have decent connectivity with the GPS coordinates text that they need medical assistance and exactly what they need. And a drone can be dispatched traveling at 60 miles an hour and be at their position in under the hour or under you know the 10 minutes based on exactly where it's located. This, this is something that, you know, it's fascinating to see. But, but Lou, let me ask you this. It might work for a place like, like like Rwanda. It might work for countries where there is no infrastructure. But could you do this over a developed country? Could you do this over France? Could you do this over the United States? Could you do this over Russia? I think that's a tough sell because if you think about it, a lot of these places have the infrastructure to, you know, do the hot drops, you know, be able to fly an airplane over top and then drop things down even if there's no infrastructure to get to them. So I see that, you know, these types of things in areas where there's no, no ability to actually, you know, fl even fly a plane that can drop anything uh, in that in that sense uh, quickly. You know, and also it takes longer to, to you know, take off a plane and, and bring down a plane. So I think that, you know, these countries are perfect targets for this type of technology because a drone can get, you know, get off real fast. It can get to the place where it needs to be. It can drop it and it can come back and it doesn't need, like you said, the infrastructure to be there. Uh, but I think it would be a tougher sell into the more, you know, the more well-developed countries that do have the infrastructure to support it. Oh, Cheever, I mean, this this is Amazon's system, right? I mean, any of these systems, they're, they're essentially doing the same thing. The only difference is how they approach the technology. But they are using some sort of aerial craft. Uh, some of the more advanced ones, like Amazon's, can actually do VTOL. So they'll, they'll take off like a quadcopter, and then they'll switch into fixed-wing flights so that they can get uh, better efficiency out of the power they have on board. But do you see this becoming a large field with a lot of players, or are we going to get to that point where there's just going to be one vendor that has really good tech uh, that is that is close source, and they end up winning the drone delivery slash drone service battle? Actually, I think 
I, I'm going to call this the kitten picture approach. It's something that appeals to everybody. And if you've ever been in places like New Mexico and Arizona, if someone's out there and gets bit by a rattlesnake, um, this is something that's really necessary. But I will say, I'm pretty sure our friends at Zipline decided to go into places like Rwanda where the government said, yes, let's do this. Right. And they don't have an FAA to fight with. Yeah. But I think now that things are starting to coalesce with the FAA and you know drones are no longer the bad guy, um, something like this could be the leverage the FAA and the, and the drone community needs to get Congress to really get behind this. And I should say that, you know, Zipline saying once the Rwanda operation is fully set up, Zipline is planning on providing similar services in Maryland, Nevada, and Washington. You know, Lou, it strikes me as we've got, we've got two pictures, two narratives approaching drones. So in the United States, drones were a toy, a toy that someone figured out how to do something useful with. Uh, they're annoying. People typically don't like them flying near them. And so that's what they associate with them, associate it with. And that's why we seem to have so much trouble here. The FAA is really cracking down on who can and who cannot fly drones. There's a huge, in fact, there really is no clear path on how you, you fly one of these commercially, unless you've got a lot of money, like an Amazon or a or Facebook or a Microsoft. But you go to a place like Rwanda where they didn't have that stage of drones being a toy. And now if you hear that whirring sound, that actually, that's a good thing. That means something good is happening. Something good is going is, is gonna to be dropped that might save a life. Is, is this another example of same tech, but just two different narratives because of where two different societies are? Absolutely. There's, there's tons of examples of this. I think this is a perfect one where, you know, you know, they're potentially going to even expand the technology behind drones because they're going to a location where the laws are not so restrictive and they're doing it, using it uh, for a particular purpose that wasn't even thought of uh, well here in the United States or in countries that kind of restrict it. And, and, you know, that happens a lot. I mean, you think about it, a lot of the technologies that we use today are expanded in other countries because they don't have such ridiculous like materials that they use in plastic bottles and and some of the aluminum alloys and that type of thing was developed in countries where the restrictions on chemicals and, and that type of thing production like in China and so on are less restrictive and so you know they they, they create less volatile products when they put them together but they were developed in countries that, that didn't necessarily have the restrictions so this is just another example of, of you know going abroad going beyond the need for the laws and seeing what they can actually apply and make use out of and I think I really hope that it actually uh, comes to fruition and that they do well right now Chibert is having a conversation with Chumley in the chat room and I think we should probably bring it in, into the stream because it's important Chibert, Chumley makes a good point, which is, wait a minute, why wouldn't I just get a Cessna and shove it out the door? Or, you know, in places that are really troubled, normally there are military aircraft, some, some big lifters like a C-130 that have cargo ramps that I could just drop supplies on. Why go through the expense of creating a system, a network, a mesh of drones that can be launched and get to their target within minutes where we already have a decent infrastructure that we can use? Well... That's true for a lot of the major cities. But you, if you looked at that video, Rwanda is a country of forests and deep ravines and mountains. And in a lot of places in Rwanda or Ghana or a lot of other um, places, there's not enough room to land a C-130. There's not enough room to land a Cessna. And the cost of running a piloted airplane, even if you own a crappy old Cessna um, 120, you're, it's still going to cost you at least, I'd say, probably 30 bucks an hour to run if you factor in fuel, pilot, and uh, even if it's a volunteer pilot, um, it costs money. Now, in the case of this drone, we're talking about an electrically powered or small engine powered drone and the cost to operate might be as low as say 10 bucks a trip instead of 10 bucks an hour and because it's parachuting in not so bad you know it's well packed and all that i've actually done i've actually had to pay for a fuel load on a c-130 
and my comptroller just about had a heart attack. Um, those things are really expensive to run. So when you start talking about something that's maybe a dozen bucks, you know, 12, 10, 12 bucks to do a delivery, they can do it at 60 miles an hour, not have to land, not have to have a skilled pilot. Um, just the economics of the delivery is, is pretty good. But that also means, well, if you're trying to deliver it in a war zone, say Afghanistan, now all of a sudden we can deliver whole blood, which is a rarity in, in the you know, battlefield. We can deliver whole blood, uh, rare antibiotics, snake bite venom, what, you name it, even into some really, really remote areas. This is an idea that time has come and I hope they succeed.